Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for joining me for my weekly guitar blog. It's April 27th, 2014, and this week we're going to do a lesson discussing the important chords of the Dorian mode. And this week's question was sent in from Scott G. He's out in San Francisco, California, and he wrote in with this email. I'm trying to develop the Dorian mode right now. However, I'm having a lot of problems deciding which chords in Dorian's harmony work the best to bring out its character. The one I've read of is the fourth chord of the Dorian key, and by using it as a major chord, Dorian works well, but there must be others. So can you cover this in a lesson for viewers? Thanks, Andrew, from Scott G. in San Francisco, California, USA. Well, hey, thanks for writing in, Scott. First of all, what you're studying right now is excellent work because as the chords found within a Mo's harmony are the key factors to its overall use and its application. By composing the most stable chord progressions with chords that really bring out the Mo's character, you'll have the best situations for jamming in and for getting as good as you can be at using the mode. In this lesson, I'll cover some of the very best chords that you can apply within Dorian minor chord progressions that will really bring out the color of the mode when you're composing or you're writing melodies or just soloing. Well, when it comes to the important chords used in uh, Dorian harmony, one of the most basic ones to start off with is simply adding the extension of a sixth uh, onto the tonal center chord. So if I had a C minor chord, I could just uh, change it over into C minor six. You can instantly inject some Dorian mode sound. So it's just converting that one chord of your uh, minor key center into a minor six and then it instantly establishes the sound of Dorian. It's very easy to do. Uh, my first example, uh, what I've done here is just created a four bar progression that has two bars of the C minor chord. And then it switches over to two bars of C minor six. It's a really straightforward sounding riff. And over top of that, I do have uh, uh, an example here that'll give you an, an idea how Dorian scale sounds when it's played under those uh, particular chord changes. So I've just got this uh, simple Dorian melody composed as a demonstration melody. Uh, I've got that jam uh, recorded into the loop pedal. So I'm just going to fire that up, play the melody, and give you a chance to hear how Dorian sounds. Here we go. All right, next I'd like to push out the sixth extension, an octave higher to a 13th. Now it's a slightly different sounding tone. It's up a whole octave from where that sixth was on the fourth string with that uh, minor six chord. But it of course still offers the same connection to Dorian. And for those who are unaware, the major six interval and also obviously its octave the 13th is the unique color defining tone of the Dorian mode. And this is due to the relationship difference we find between the Dorian and the foundational scale of minor tonality, the natural minor. If you listen closely, here's natural minor. Here is Dorian mode. So you can hear that real color difference between the, the sixth degree the, in the natural minor. The six is a minor six. In Dorian, it's major six. So that really brings into light, you know, the sounds of these uh, minor six and minor 13, they're obviously minor chords, but they contain that major six extension on them, which allows them to fit so well to really draw out the flavor of Dorian mode. Now I've composed a chord progression using that minor 13. It just starts on a minor seven chord, and then we uh, move up into having 13, and then we're gonna shoot over to having a G minor seven, and then we'll have a B flat chord with a D in the bass. Now I've got that progression into the loop pedal and I'm just going to fire that loop up and play a melody uh, in Dorian mode over top of it. Here we go, sounds like this.
Well, in my next example, I wanted to touch on the idea of converting the quality of the fourth chord in our minor tonality over from its typical minor state into a major. But since this principle is so well known, I actually wanted to push its harmony up to the seventh chord structure of dominant seventh. So the next Dorian progression that I have uh, for you, so we're gonna change keys a little bit, we're gonna drop down a little bit, go to the B minor key center. And it not only applies the dominant seventh chord quality off that fourth degree, so we're going to build a dominant seventh chord off of an E note to build E7 off of uh, our root chord of B minor. But I've also included another interesting extended chord idea that's great for producing the flavor of Dorian as well. It's the idea of placing a minor ninth chord on the fifth degree of any minor tonality progression. And in this case, in the key of B minor, we get F sharp minor nine chord. So here's how this progression sounds. Uh, it's going to start on B minor seven, just jam out on that. Head over to the F sharp minor nine, and then head to the E seven. So it's a really cool little funky jam. You hear a lot of these sounds in the soul R&B stuff. It's a really cool sound. So I also have a melody that I'm gonna play, a Dorian melody out of the uh, B. Dorian scale. So I uh, have it all uh, programmed into the loop pedal here for our set of chord changes. So I'm going to fire the chords up and play the melody for you. It goes like this. Well, for my final chord progression, I wanted to touch on a couple of more interesting chord concepts. And uh, first off, uh, the, a common idea that I like working with a lot. It's a major four chord idea, once again, from that Dorian harmony. You know, but it, the simple idea of this one is just inverting the chord into its first inversion. So instead of playing your standard E major or E dominant, invert the thing so it's got its third in the bass. It's a really cool sound. So it's a really neat one. Um, in the final progression, I'll be operating again in the uh, key of B minor. And the B minor seven is gonna be used as the first uh, measures chord. And in measure two, I'll invert actually the uh, seventh chord of the key as well, which is A. So I'm gonna have a first inversion of A, which will place the C sharp in the bass. Another really nice sound. In measure three, I'll apply that uh, four chord with the third in the bass. And in measure four, I have uh, our final chord concept here. It's a really neat idea. It's basically, a dominant nine suspended fourth chord, also often known to many guitarists as the dominant 11th. This chord can work much like the minor ninth we discussed in the last example since the quality is suspended and you know the other chord tones of it you know they all fit in just fine with Dorian harmony. It just doesn't have that minor third, it has a suspension instead, but the suspension is part of the harmony and the scale, so it works really well. It's a very cool sound, especially when combined with the other inversion concepts alongside of it. So once again, the progression is gonna move B minor seven into that uh, first inversion of A, then first inversion of E, and then we'll have that dominant 11th, or you could call it uh, you know dominant nine suspended. All right, so uh, basically I have this uh, programmed into a loop pedal. I'm gonna play a little bit over top of it using B Dorian mode. So let's fire that up and just have some fun with this.
comes to having a solid understanding of the harmonies for all the major and minor tonality scales, it takes both practice and initiative to work on all the material. It is a lot of material to study. It's a lot of time to invest in knowing both the scale structures as well as all the harmonic structures of the modes. But, uh, you know, I've made a number of good video lessons on the Creative Guitar Studio YouTube channel covering each of the modes. So be sure to spend time watching those lessons. They'll help a great deal with your understanding of all this information. And above all else, study the modes as thoroughly as possible. Get to know their names, their degrees, their structure, their harmonies, the important intervals in them, song write with them, compose with them, uh, practice soloing with them, because they are supremely important to both your composing and to your improvisation. Uh, but anyway, that's all the time I have for today. As always, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great week, and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.